Hi there, you're listening to the Bigfoot Society podcast, and I'm Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to individuals who have experienced Sasquatch in some way or another, so you won't want to miss an episode. Make sure you're subscribed on the platform that you're listening to and share this episode with a friend. It does not cost a thing, and it helps the show continue to grow. If you'd like to hear Bigfoot Society episodes early and ad-free, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member. Links to those are in the show notes. And Bigfoot Society, I've taken far too much of your time so far, so let's get on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, we've got the privilege of talking to uh, Alex again. Uh, you may remember Alex from previous episodes. Uh, back a while ago, we talked about the uh, Bigfoot of Prince of Wales Island back in the day in Alaska. And we also talked about some uh, interesting, uh, I believe it was uh, Skinwalker type situations uh, that he had in the Southwest of the US. But uh, Alex reached out to me again. He's uh, got some uh, interesting things to uh, share about uh, his younger years. But uh, Alex, how are you doing today, sir? Very good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good, man. It's always a good good day when I'm able to finish out the day uh, chatting about some interesting things uh, over the phone for the podcast. And uh, man, we've had some real doozies lately with, uh, I'll tell you what, man, the one I just did, YouTube's not letting me upload it. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're kind of i don't know if it's just a glitch but like i don't know if i'll be able to put it on youtube we'll see but anyways uh fingers crossed on that one but uh alex what have you been up to lately the same thing i do every night jeremiah try to take over the world no Classic. i'm kidding sorry just kidding sorry half of my listeners Forgive aren't me. gonna aren't gonna get that but uh yeah pinky in the brain reference yeah. just in case anybody's wondering Look it up on uh, Hulu or or whatever, and you might be able to find some old episodes. It's it's a classic for sure. Good stuff. But uh, sorry, <laughs> no, you're good, uh, Alex. You were saying that, and I think we may have uh, referenced this a little bit in one of the episodes. But uh, you said that uh, you wanted to get deep into a sighting that you had in your younger years. So mm -hmm. I'm going to let you uh, jump right into that. And um, let's start, let's start chatting about that. Uh, what happened to you back in those days? Okay. Uh, it was July 5th, 1978. I remember it pretty well. Uh, it was just the usual day we'd been up there and we'd just celebrated the 4th of July the day before and uh, we were kind of hanging around, and, and this is at my grandpa and grandma's house in uh, Hood River, Oregon, and it was just like any other day or, or whatever. Uh, this was back before I really knew about Bigfoot. Um, I, I, I mean, you, you know, you've heard of it, and, and I'd heard people reference it, but, you know, as I've stated in previous shows you know i'd put that in the realm of unicorns fairies elves trolls that kind of stuff you know mythological doesn't exist couldn't possibly exist and that's kind of where i'd put it so you know and uh we'd been out berry picking and uh, we have blackberry briars which grew along the road up by my grandma and grandpa's house um and we we'd go out there and we'd pick them and they're really good and so we we just went back to the house my grandma made some blackberry pie and some other blackberry stuff jam and whatnot and uh it was about nine o'clock i went to bed and uh this this is the part that really gets me because like i wish to god I, I wish to god i'd never seen that bigfoot man I really do and i'm not laughing because it's funny i'm laughing because even talking about it just makes me like relive it uh and it's like so it's like about 1 30 in the morning basically and uh i i i have to go to the bathroom so i wake up i i do my business and i'm coming back into my room and uh up above our our room had no curtains on the window so you could see in and out 
and there was nothing blocking the view or anything like that. We had two windows in the in the back bedroom of the house, and one window was on the right side of the room, the other was on the left. On the left side of the room, right above that, my grandpa had a floodlight with a sensor on it. And if you walked out in front of that at night, uh, it would turn on and it had two bright floodlights over it. And so uh, I'm getting ready. I'm walking. I just stepped into the door and walked partway into the room and that floodlight kicked on. And I was sitting there thinking, wow, that's kind of weird because it's like 1.30 in the morning. And, you know, it's like we had on the wall, we had a small uh, clock with a little pendulum on it. And it, it showed the time as one one thirty, And so, like, when I saw that light kick on, I was like, because my grandpa, he had that floodlight out there with the sensor because he, he worked at the sawmill. Uh, up there and uh, he would come out and that floodlight would kick on and he had his little white Toyota truck, a small Toyota truck, not the big ones or any of that, but it was a real small one. I don't remember exactly what model it was. I just remember it was white and it was small. I mean, it's big enough for him to fit in, obviously, but, you know, it wasn't a a big size truck or a full size truck. So. Anyway, he would use that so that when he came out there like 3.30, 4 in the morning to go to work, that he could get in the car, the floodlight would be on, and then he'd put his key in the door and take off. And so I'm sitting there, and right next to that truck, there was a big fuel tank, uh, which he had filled regularly and had uh, uh, gas in it. And so he would use that to fill his, his vehicles and stuff. And uh, anyway, so the light kicks on. I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe there was something going on at the at the sawmill. Maybe he had to go into work early. So I start walking toward the window, and I look out the window, and this is still hard to talk about, man. Because this is this is a direct sighting. This isn't like where you're looking at something through binoculars or a rifle scope or some type of telescopic lens or something. This is like you're like five, six feet away from this thing. And it's like you look out and you're a kid and you look out the window and you see this gigantic frigging Bigfoot just standing there looking at the light and it, it it held its hand not its paw didn't have a paw like a bear it had a hand a gigantic frigging hand this hand was like the size of a boat oar i mean the hand was massive and muscular i i can't even describe to you how strong this bigfoot was and how strong it looked I've told people before that it looked like it could literally rip the house right off the foundation and not even break a sweat. That's how massive this thing was. And it had its hand over its eyes because the light was blinding it. I I don't think it expected that because it it acted kind of surprised. And it had like a, I don't know. I don't know, like a, a weird look on its face. I can't really explain it. Like, what the hell kind of kind of look? You know what I mean? Uh, like being blinded and putting its hand over its face. Mm. You know, um, it had the hand, the palm facing outward, and the hand was like covering its eyes, like it was holding it up to its eyes. And uh, it's like. My brain is just gone. I I can't even think. I can't even move. I'm just staring. And it's like, you know, it kind of, I don't know. I guess it got used to the light or something. And then the light kind of, I don't know, it was just weird. It kind of looked over, put its hand over. You know how people put their hands over their eyes when lights or lights are there and they mm-hmm. kind of make it like the brow of a hat, you know, like the, the hats people wear, you know, how you, you put your hand over your eyes and put it right around your eyebrow level mm-hmm. where you can cover your eyes from the light. It looked in there in the window and I think it saw me standing there 
and it was kind of squinting and I'll tell you that it was albino. It had weird pink skin. And you know how albino rabbits have those weird reddish pink eyes? That's what its eyes were like. And that's what its eyes looked like. And that scared the living hell out of me. That was the craziest looking thing I had ever seen in my life. It probably was like four foot at the shoulders. It had like no neck. Its head was set directly on its shoulders, it looked like. And it didn't look, it didn't have like an ape face. You know how apes have like uh, their, their, where their face is, it kind of protrudes and sticks out a little bit, like on chimpanzees and stuff. It didn't have that. It had a flat face like humans do. And it had a weird nose. Its nose was kind of bulbous. And it was. <laughs> God, even thinking about this trips me out, seriously. It's like when I talk about it, man, it's like I'm right there again. It's like I'm looking at it. I can see it in my brain. I, I can I can just like, I don't know, it's like it just happened. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like I'm right there looking at it right now in my mind. And it's like my brain just shredded i mean i didn't even know what to do man i was i was so friggin' scared i i didn't know if it was going to grab me through the window if it was going to try to get in i didn't know what it was going to do i had no idea and so it walks up to the window places both hands over its eyes and and stares in at me and you know it when i say over its eyes i mean like you, you know how they salute in the military and they salute like that, but it had its, it's like its thumb over on its cheek and its hand over its eye ridge, both hands, its thumbs on its cheeks and its hand over its, right above its brow. And it was looking in the window at me and the, that Bigfoot had weird eyes. It had little eyes. They were small and round and set real close together. And it's just like, it was absolutely terrifying, absolutely frigging terrifying. I mean, I, I'm just like, what the hell? I don't even know what to do, man. I'm just like, and it, it seemed to go on forever. You know what I mean? It, it just seemed like, like, uh, like it was hours and it was really just a few seconds. I mean, it was probably only like a minute, if that. And it's looking in the window and I'm just sitting there standing there I should say just like dumb as can be and I, I finally I finally kind of let out a like that kind of and, and it kind of stepped back a little bit and it got a surprised look on its face you know what I mean like it like I don't know, its eyes kind of opened up a little wider and like it stepped back and it was looking at me like, why the hell did you do that? You know what I mean? Why is he screaming? What the hell? You know, and kind of uh, like a surprise look. And then it just kind of it kind of glares at me and then it turns around and it starts walking away. And as it walked away, it let out this really bizarre screech. I will never forget that for the rest of my life. I can't imitate it, but it I, I heard at once a sound that was very similar to it. It was recorded in 1975 on the Lumi Reservation in Washington. Yeah. And it was re recorded by a, a uh, police officer. Um, and I cannot remember what that gentleman's name was. But anyway, he recorded it, and it was just this really weird screech, and it let it out, and it was just like, you know, I, I can't even imitate it, but, like, I could feel it in my body, you know what I mean? Like, it, it like the sound when it hit me it felt like i was almost like i physically hit you know what i mean not like a punch but like with vibrations from the sound and i was like you know i was just sitting there and i was just like completely dumbfounded 
And, you know, I guess my grandpa heard me and he, he came running in the room, but by the time he got in there, it was already out of sight. Cause this sucker was taking like five foot, whatever strides and it was out of sight in just a few seconds and so by the time he got in there he was like what 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 the hell you know what's going on i couldn't even talk you know i was just sitting there like you know kind of thing and my grandpa was like he, he took me out to the front room and he sat me down and he said boy you need to breathe you need to calm down you need to think he said what happened and I couldn't tell him. I don't even know how long it was, man, that I stood there or sat there on the couch looking at him, dumb as dumb as a rock. And then I was finally, after whatever time, able to get it out. And I, I just kind of stumbled at it. And I said, Grandpa, I said, I saw a big, hairy monster sitting outside my window. And, and I said, it scared me real bad, Grandpa. And he looked right at me and he said the craziest thing, Jeremiah. He didn't say the moose were back, the elk were back, the dogs were back, the bears were back. He said the damned apes are back. Really? As soon as I told him what I saw, he said the damned apes are back. And he wouldn't say anything after that. I asked him, I was like, Grandpa, what do you mean? He, he just turned real white, like pale, like he'd just seen a ghost. You know, and and he was like, uh, my grandpa was a very religious man. And if he cursed, it was because there was like a severe provocation or, or something that was really in all the time I knew my grandpa. That was the only time I ever heard him curse when he said the damned apes are back. And it's like, God, talking about it, man, I'm just sitting here sweating and sh shaking a little bit i'm sorry i apologize jeremiah it's just w when you see something up close and personal like that there's no way you can mistake what it is okay it wasn't a bear wasn't a moose wasn't an elk wasn't a guy in a costume it was just a large hairy ape and i don't know how to describe it any better than that but i'm sitting there on the couch man and my grandpa will not explain himself now i will tell you that a few years later he had passed away um and my grandma had told me afterward that he worked on mount hood uh they had a logging contract in mount hood national forest she did not tell me exactly where so i don't know but they had a logging contract up there to thin out the forest and and stuff like that and she said that when he was up there in the logging camp, they had these canvas tents, these big canvas tents where the guys would sleep and they had some set up where they'd eat and stuff like that. She said that the Bigfoot came to his camp and would like break their axes. And they had these big, like 55 gallon fuel drums. And those things weighed like hundreds of pounds. You know what I mean? This isn't something a normal person can lift. In order to lift them, they had to have like heavy machinery come in to, to lift those things up one of the bigfoots or two i don't know how many they found one set of tracks so i'm assuming it's one according to my grandma um she said they found one set of tracks this thing had grabbed that 55 gallon fuel drum picked it up carried it about 100 feet and threw it in a ravine you see that's that's why when i tell you that bigfoot are like freakishly strong it's like i'm not joking at all if it can throw a 55 gallon fuel drum that is filled with fuel into a ravine that's something that is like beyond powerful that's like almost like i don't even know where to put that but she said that when the, the when the loggers went out to log she said the bigfoots would come in and tear up their camp and they always knew it was Bigfoot because they found those gigantic freaking tracks out there. Uh, my grandpa actually saw one, I guess, according to my grandma. He would never talk about it to me directly, but she said that he told her about it. And he said that they were chestnut colored. And he said they were gigantic, like 10 feet tall. And he said that they, they could like 
break trees and uproot trees and stuff like that. And he said they'd throw rocks at them. And eventually the Bigfoot were so aggressive up there on Mount Hood that they scared them all away. And the loggers and, and lumberjacks and all that, they, they just quit. And they just abandoned their camp and left and never went back. They didn't even go back to pick up the stuff that was out there, I guess. So it's like my grandpa knew what I saw as soon as I was finally able to stammer out what I told him. He knew immediately what it was. You know, like I said, he didn't say the damn bears are back. The damn guys in costumes are back. He said the damned apes are back. And I will never forget that sighting as long as I live, man. That that thing haunts me, will haunt me till the day I die. The the weird thing about it is is that it had that weird pink skin and had white hair on its body, like all white, no no color in the hair except white. And the the hair on its body was like three to four inches. And the next day, my grandpa and I went outside. And this thing left tracks that were an inch and three quarters impressed into the ground. My grandpa was six foot and he weighed about 250 pounds. And he barely made an impression, but whatever, however much the Bigfoot I saw weighed, it left prints that were an inch and three quarters impressed into the ground. And uh, it had, like I said, a five foot stride. And he measured the footprints using his tape measure. And they were 22 inches long, and they were about seven inches wide. And like I said, the sucker was massive. I'd say it would probably have to be in the seven and a half, eight foot, maybe eight and a half foot range. Because our windows on my grandpa's house in the back end were about six or so feet off the ground. And uh, this thing had to bend down to look in the window. So you're talking about something that's frigging massive. And like I said, the the whole incident couldn't have been more than like, I don't know, maybe a minute tops. I, I'm not even sure, to be honest. I was so tripped out. I, I just, I was completely dumbfounded. And so when my grandpa finally got me calmed down, uh, like I said, he would not discuss with me what he said about the, the apes, damned apes are back. And so, you know, he looked at me and he said, boy, don't ask. And so when my grandpa said stuff like that, my grandpa was a man of few words. He was the strong, silent type. If he said, boy, don't ask, I knew if I kept asking, I'd get a whooping because my grandpa was not afraid to hand out a little little justice, if you know what I mean. And so I just, I just dropped it. But like I said, years later, my grandma clued me in. And... Uh, <laughs> Both my my grandfather Lee, who was the grandpa I grew up with, and my grandpa Pat, my my flesh and blood grandpa, um, my grandma remarried to my grandpa Lee after my grandpa Pat passed away. Um, my grandpa Pat was also a logger, and he had experiences with them. I guess in Timber, Oregon, which is outside of Banks, Oregon, which is not too far from Portland, um, but it's out in the countryside and in Timber, Oregon, that place is massively forested. There's like hundreds of miles out there of forests or there were when I was a kid. I don't know about now. I haven't been in Oregon since 1996. I have no idea what it looks like now, but when I was a kid, Timber was just all forest, dick, uh, dense, thick forest. And, uh, like, pine trees and stuff and they were pretty good sized and uh i guess my grandpa pat had experiences with them too i guess uh i guess the bigfoot would like break their axes and uh my grandpa told my grandma that you know those big saws that they have the kind that have like two handles and it takes two people to use it yep and they're metal and they've got like wooden handles and they're probably like six feet long, I think. Um, they had one of those and my grandma said that the Bigfoots ripped the saw up, saws apart by grabbing them, putting their hands on it. And I guess one of the loggers saw them do this. It picked up the saw and this is some 
pretty heavy stuff. You know what I mean? And it, it, you know how people can grab paper and rip it down the middle. That's what the Bigfoot did to the saw and the metal on the saw. It ripped it like paper, Mm. just ripped it. And like they said that the Bigfoot were so strong that they could like twist the axes and, and break them just by like holding them in their hands. And like then they'd take the the metal, the axe head, and they'd like throw them in in like uh, rivers, lakes, streams, whatever. They'd throw them in there, and uh, it's just like. I don't know, man. It's just, (laughs) you know, I'm just, I'm not sorry. Go ahead. I'm not surprised that, that they would have that kind of thing happen to them. I mean, there's so many stories of like individuals that might be clearing brush or in this case, cutting down trees. And Mm -hmm. uh, I could definitely, you know, that's, that's one of the easy ways to get, these creatures pretty mad it seems so i could definitely see how you know you'd have axes broken or or saws ripped in half or you know uh any other tools just just devastated and thankfully you know the bigfoot weren't coming after the guys themselves in this situation mm-hmm. although i'm sure that probably happened in other situations but uh they were pretty lucky to get away with just their axes being twisted for sure my grandma did say that there was a guy who shot at one, a Bigfoot, on that mountain in Mount Hood that was on their camp. He shot at one. That guy ended up disappearing. They never heard from him again. Nobody knew what happened to him. I don't know the man's name. I don't know where he was from. Um, all I know is my grandma said he was a new person on the crew and nobody really knew him very well. And I guess he had saw a Bigfoot and shot at it. And the next day he disappeared. And, you know, again, nobody knows what happened to him. I I don't have any, I can only tell you what my grandma said. I can't tell you who the man was, where he was from or anything about him. All I can tell you is what she said. So I will just say to your listeners, don't shoot at Bigfoot. Don't do it. Yeah. Not, not a good idea. You, you, and even if it's a very unhealthy idea, even if you were to, to get one, you know that their brothers are right around the corner. So you're not just dealing with one mm-hmm. as, well, as how I look at it. You, you've got multiples, so you better be ready. Yeah. Natives I've talked to who live out in Oregon, um, like the Chehalis, you know, the Yakima tribe and, and some other stuff. Um, some of the people I talked to, they said that those, those suckers live in families and that, they look out for each other and they, they whistle and call each other in when stuff like that happens. And then you get like mass attacked. And I think we can all learn and learn them uh, from the Fred Beck experience uh, from Ape Canyon in 1924. Oh, uh, absolutely. You shouldn't, you shouldn't shoot a Bigfoot. No, but no. It's like, I, I know we're getting off topic. I'm sorry. It's just, I, I, when I talk about that sighting I had, it, it really, really kind of shakes me up and I kind of get upset. Uh, not a you or a, your listeners, just the situation. It kind of is like PTSD for me. I tried talking to a therapist about it one time because somebody said I should. That therapist looked at me like I was a psycho, you know, like wanted to put me in a rubber room or something. I was like, what? You know, it's like whatever. So I I didn't talk about this stuff for years. And uh, you know, people would make fun of you. It's like people say, Oh, you're just doing that to get attention. Yeah, sure. Okay. I like getting ridiculed and bullied and beat up and harassed. You know, yeah, I love that. It's a lot of fun. Everybody should try it. Yeah. It, Stupid Bigfoot. Right. It it un- unfortunately that back in the day, I mean, it used to not be like how it is right now, but years ago, I mean, people would be ridiculed. Well, people still laugh at you if you talk about that stuff. True, fair enough. But um, how old? How old were you again when when you had this sighting? 
Seven. That's right. Seven. I think I remember that from before, but I just want to make sure it was called out in, in this one. Um, mm-hmm. Do you mind sharing for context? That, so the Hood River is, is a pretty long river. Do you, was it near like maybe a certain town that this took place or for area context? Or I don't know if you can share that. Yeah, sure. Um, Hood River is near like Odell, uh, the Dalles. Uh, it's about two, two and a half hours. I think it's either east or west of Portland. I can't remember. I apologize, but Portland is probably the nearest big city to where it is. Hood River, when I was a kid, was a small town and, uh, it was, you know, not too far from Mount Hood. Um, you could probably get to Mount Hood. Uh, probably about an hour from where we lived in Hood River. Okay. If that helps. I was, I was a bit confused, but I looked at a map and I became unconfused. Um, I was thinking of the Columbia River. Hood River is the name of yeah, the no, town. The Columbia totally River. got it. Yeah, Hood River right. is the name of the town. <laughs> the Columbia River is right near Hood River. Hood right. River actually, the city of Hood River, the, the sprawling part of it, actually is on the Columbia River, the, the lower part of the city. <laughs> wow. And back then, you're saying it was, it was a pretty uh, unpopulated area? Well, my grandpa owned about, oh gosh, it was about a hundred acres. Oh, wow. At one time he sold a lot of it off, but, um, yeah, he, we, we had a lot of forest on our land and now I will tell you, I never saw that Bigfoot again. Uh, I can tell you the hood river I found out years later has a long history of Bigfoot. Um, the Hood River Gazette has reported on Bigfoot sightings for years before I was born. And plus, if you talk to Native Americans who live in that area, they'll tell you straight up that they've been seeing Bigfoot for centuries before even Europeans came or settlers or any of that. And uh, they said that the Bigfoot out there would like, if the natives were out fishing or or they would do like these nets, kind of like dip nets in Alaska kind of thing. But they they do those nets and the, the Bigfoot would come out and grab the nets, throw them over their shoulders and walk back in the woods. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, <laughs> Bigfoot are so crazy. I mean, they're just, they're goofy. I mean, you, you can't really predict or expect them to do certain things. Uh they're, I don't know. They're just weird. They, they are their own people and I don't know, whatever. In any of those reports, did you ever see uh, anyone else seeing a, a white one in that area like you had seen, or do you think that was a, a pretty rare occurrence? Uh, if it helps, I talked to Peter Byrne. And he said that he'd never heard of an albino Bigfoot that I like what I described. And uh, I actually met him through Ray Crow of the Western Bigfoot Society at the time. It was called the Western Bigfoot Society. Um, I met him. I met Renee DeHinden, John Green, and a bunch of the other old Bigfooters, old timers. And uh, Peter Byrne actually told me that he believed my story simply because of the description I gave him. He said that um, when I told him that the eyes were real small and set close together, he told me, he said, you don't sound like a well-educated person. He said, I'm not trying to be rude. You know, he had a British accent. He's like, I'm not trying to be rude, but, you know, kind of thing. He said, you don't sound like a well-educated person who would know that kind of a detail. But he said, as an educated person myself, he said, I can tell you that one of the traits of albinos is to have round, small eyes that are set close together. And he said, that's an inbreeding trait. And uh, this is what he said. I don't know if it's true. I'm just telling you what the man said. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a primatologist. I don't really know anything about that kind of stuff outside of the world of Bigfoot. But that's what Peter Byrne told me. And he said he would he would label my sighting as a class A simply for that detail. 
and you know, plus, uh, I don't know, man. How how long ago was it that you were able to meet all those gentlemen? Uh, Peter Byrne. Yeah, this was in the year. This was like late. 80s, early 90s kind okay. of thing. Okay. Wow. That that yeah. So I was thinking it would have been the around the early 90s by interviews I've had in the past. But did you ever meet a gentleman named Henry Franzoni? I did not. No. Okay. Yeah, he would have been. Uh, At least not. Not that I know of. He would have been the late nine, uh, mid to late nineties. He started hanging out with Peter Byrne. I just talked to him a, f a few days ago, but, um, mm. so do you actually talk to, uh, Renee to Hinden, uh, face to face or is it like a over the phone thing? Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. I talked to him face to face. Oh. He was at a Bigfoot days, D A Z E in uh, Washington state that I attended in the early nineties. Um, I think it was like 91, 92, maybe. I don't remember. It was sometime around then. And Ray Crow of the Western Bigfoot Society was a part of that. He had helped set it up. And Renee DeHenden was there. And I got to ask him like a whole bunch of questions. And that was a salty old boy, I'll tell you what. He was no frigging nonsense at all. He had no use for people who were telling stories or whatever he was very blunt and very direct and i i will tell people don't meet your heroes because sometimes they're a lot different in real life than, <laughs> than, than how you think they be. i liked him but i mean he was just you know if he thought somebody was bsing and he had a really strong like french canadian accent he'd start dogging them you know and he'd start like cursing them in french and stuff <laughs> it's like, Oh, absolutely. It's like, absolutely. It's like Renee, Renee, you know, his friends who knew what he was saying was like, Renee, Renee, calm down. It's not that deep, you know. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take a breath. And he's like, these fucking people, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah. It's like he was so funny. Oh, he, one guy was telling stories and he was talking about uh, Bigfoot was like a, a, a interdimensional psychic ufo not and renee looked at him and he goes this guy is full of shit he is stupid he doesn't know anything at all you know and then he starts talking in french about him and i'm like i don't know what he said i don't speak french but i know it didn't sound very nice and i know people who knew what he was saying were turning bright red yeah he was like this he, he had no use for people saying bigfoot's a psychic <laughs> interdimensional no. ufo not he was like, it's a fucking ape. Get it right. <laughs> he just had this really weird way of talking. But he was so funny. He was just absolutely hilarious. And listeners will uh, think that might be in, like an uh, exaggeration, but it, it's not. If you go to the Sasquatch Archives YouTube channel, you can watch video of Renee talking exactly really? like that. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, have you you've never been there? Oh, my goodness. You're going to love it. So no. it's like all these people have sent in their old VHS tapes of these old conferences from the nineties and stuff to this guy in California. Uh, sorry, this guy in um, Canada named Todd Prescott. And he's put them all on this YouTube channel called Sasquatch archives. And it's going to change your life. You'll love it. So really, yeah, check it out later. I'll it's, have to look that up. I really awesome. did not even know about that. That conference that oh, you went to you. might actually even be on there. Uh, there's some really, oh, really I would old love that. stuff. So I would love yeah. that. Um, you can hmm. see uh, Renee DeHinden going up against Dr. Meldrum uh, when me they were uh, when Dr. Meldrum was a lot younger, of course, uh, mm -hmm. mustache only, but, um, just, uh, it's, it's, it's a wild trip. So definitely check that out. I'll try to remember to put that in the show notes as well. But, um, did you go to any other, uh, Bigfoot conferences or anything, or was that the main one that you went to? Um, that's, that's really Ray Crow had a lot of stuff at his, uh, Western Bigfoot society. We used to meet there like, every once in a while. And he had different people come out there. Um, I wasn't always able to attend because at the time I was working a lot. But when I could attend, he had uh, John Green out there one time. Uh, and John Green, let me tell you, that guy knows Bigfoot in and out. Sure. 
Yeah, he is a he he was really like an encyclopedia. I think him passing away was a huge loss to the Bigfoot community because Absolutely. he took like really detailed notes mm-hmm. on people. And I was actually able to talk to him about Albert Osman because I asked him straight up. I said, do you think that guy was full of crap? And he goes, no. He said, I've known Albert for years. And he, he was very, he had a very quiet way of talking. You know what I mean? And he was like, no, he says, I've known him for years. I'd known him for years back then. And he said his story never changed, even to the day he died. He said he never recanted the story, and he always told it the same. He said it never varied or changed in any way. If he didn't know something, if somebody asked him a question, he'd tell him he didn't know it. He said he was just real straightforward. And uh, I don't know, I, I, I always admired the older Bigfooters, you know, like, like Renee, uh, John Green. Uh, you know, and some of the others out there. That's it. That's incredible. So you actually would go to the meetings and, and attend those when you could. Yes. Wow. That's awesome. Do you remember any of the other people that would, that you remember from being in attendance as well, or? Um, I heard that James Bobo Faye went there once. I did not, I was not able to be there when he did. Um, but I guess he knew Ray Crow and he knew, I, I guess, according to Ray, it was a really great meeting. He put it in his, he had this, this, uh, newsletter he put out called the track record. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I guess Bobo was featured in there or something, or he talked about him and what he said. And I guess it was like, really, he said it was not only entertaining. He said the guy just was like a Bigfoot sponge. You know what I mean? That's how Ray described him. He said he knew about Bigfoot in and out. And, you know, he knew Native American stuff. He knew stuff that scientists said. And he said that Bobo was, uh, he said that Bobo was really smart. He said a lot of people hear him talk and they think, oh, he's just this big, dumb guy. He he said, no, he's actually highly educated and he's really intelligent. Bobo's extremely smart, yeah. Yeah, and he said that he he uh, was just like a an encyclopedia, and uh, I don't know. I, I really wish I could have met Bobo. He's he's kind of a hero to me too. Um, him and Cliff Berkman. I've never had the chance to meet either one of them. I would like to. Um, could no, still happen. Have, they did have a meeting that Ray went to that was in another place. I do not remember where it was, where they had Bob Gimlin and I had wanted to go so bad that I had to work and I could not get time off from work mm. at the time because we were shorthanded. Sure. Um, I, I really would love to meet Bob Gimlin just to, because just to, he's like a superstar, you know what I mean, in the Bigfoot world. And he was a hero to me growing up because – He's never recanted his story, not once. And when he tells the story, he tells it the same way, you know, and Bob seems to me to be the type of guy when I've seen him on interviews on TV, just seems to be real open and real honest. And I would love to meet him. I really would just to just to thank him for what he did and and stuff like that. I've never heard anyone say uh, that he is not a genuine person. I mean, you're absolutely right. He keeps to his story and Mm -hmm. it, it just, it doesn't deviate, you know, it's just, it's, he's just one of the coolest guys. I've not, I've not met him yet and uh, maybe never will. Uh, He just, I believe he just had his, I want to say his 90 something birthday is it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's one of the last, last individuals. Um, But Wow, that's a I I did not know that you had those connections. That's that's very cool, Alex. Um the last one of the last times we had talked, you know, we talked about Alaska and um uh, that's a fantastic episode listeners if you haven't heard the Prince of Wales Island episode, uh, I'll have it linked. You need to check that out. But you'd mentioned there might be a follow-up trip at one point. Has that happened or or anything of that? Um, 
my wife was able to go there. I unfortunately was not. Okay. Uh, I, I'm on oxygen. Sure. <laughs> unfortunately. Sure. Uh, I don't have like a small oxygen concentrator. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you, you can't fly with the oxygen, the metal oxygen tanks I have. Oh, uh, gotcha. That, it yep. doesn't allow that. So. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I am in the process of trying to get a small portable oxygen concentrator. And then I will be able to fly again. And nice. then we will go up there. But if I ever do, I will definitely make sure I document everything this time. Uh, so, but yeah, no, that hasn't happened for me yet, unfortunately. There's some questions that I've I've started to ask <laughs> just because as as you do more and more episodes, you kind of pick up on on stuff and i'm just i'm just gonna throw some out just to see throw i'm throwing them out to everyone to see if it sticks because uh there's some interesting side storylines um one of one of them is did you ever have any interactions or hear anything about uh bigfoot or sasquatch in the rainier oregon area i actually lived in st helens which is not far from rainier Okay. Yeah. I uh, lived in St. Helens for about four or five years um, uh, when I was a boy. And uh, yeah, I heard stories about it. Um, A lot of times uh, back in the 80s when I lived there, uh, that stuff wasn't really talked about. Because if you tried to talk about it, people would like bully you and harass you. I did make the mistake one time of sharing that I had seen Bigfoot and I got bullied and harassed so bad that I started getting like migraines and headaches and getting ulcers and getting like physically sick. Oh dear. So yeah, in St. Helens and St. Helens and Rainier probably wasn't a really good idea back then to be talking about Bigfoot because the people out there were real no nonsense people and they didn't want to hear about stuff like that. Gotcha. If there isn't in the Bible, it doesn't exist. Right. Dang it. And there is no right. mention of Bigfoot anywhere in the Bible, therefore it can't be real. Oh, the comments are going to be ripping the, today. This is great. The YouTube comments are going to be rocking. I love it. Um, well, I'll tell you what, well, they I can get mad or whatever. I'm telling you what the people told me. I know it. I'm I know not it. saying, you know, that I don't believe the Bible or any of that. I'm telling you what they told me. Absolutely. So, you know, if people want to get hurt about it, they can get hurt. But oh, yeah. That's those people saying that. That isn't something I'm telling them. That's what was told to me when I was getting my ass whooped mm-hmm. by these punk kids who were bullying Ugh. me. That's that's terrible. So, you know, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, people can get as hot as they want about that. Because I know when you talk about the Bible, if you say anything that isn't just glowing and positive, these people freak out. But, you know, it's like, look, it is what it is. There's jerks in Christianity. If you can't deal with that, shut up, get out, move on. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you can't realize there's jerks in every religion and non-religion, jerks are a way of life. It is what it is. You can either accept it, get over it and move on, or you can cry about it and get angry. It's your choice. Absolutely. I choose not to be angry. It's all how you react to it for sure. Um, Next one is kind of a curve curveball, but I know that we've talked about some other topics as well. There was another episode where we talked about uh, skinwalker interaction and and seeing mm-hmm. a weird uh, individual on the side of the road once. I was down in the southwest, I believe. But um, at any point, have you heard of um, people seeing what? what looks to be like a, a, uh, a hyena. Like a hyena? Yeah, like from Africa. Yeah. I can't say I've ever heard that. All right. I've heard stories of the, the chupacabra that they kind of describe it as being like a koi wolf or a dog or something. But oh. I've never heard of anybody saying they saw a hyena. Keep, keep your ears out. It's, it's a, it's a weird thing that is starting to, 
more people are starting to come forward with stuff just because it's it's being uh, talked about specifically on a podcast called Cryptids of the Corn. They did a really interesting episode about North Cryptids America. Cryptids of the Corn? Yeah, it's a great, <laughs> dude, it's a great podcast. It's a, it's like if you well, like, you. that's just a weird name. They talk about cryptids, but they also are uh, biology guys. So they know a lot about the animal kingdom. So it's a great combination. Um, and their episode about uh, hyenas being seen, and that's probably when people see Dogman, they're actually seeing potentially a North American hyena. It's, it's, it'll mess with your head for sure. But. Yeah, that, that is, that is unusual, but I've heard weird stories about other stuff, so I can't discount that. Exactly. In, you absolutely have, uh, over the years and, and people that might remember the, uh, episode in Alaska, you were involved with the, uh, Salvation Army. I believe you were uh, a minister with them, correct? That is correct. Yes. Yeah. In your years of being involved with them, was there ever a time where you experienced something so weird that it almost made you walk away or, um, it just, really knocked you back a bit. That's, that's unusual. What do you mean by weird? Well, you know, if you're really into, you know, um, let's say you're involved in the ministry and, and you're really doing, um, the, the work of the Lord, you're going to come up against some opposition, right? And you might encounter some some weird, out of the ordinary things. Was there ever a time where, like, you really came up against some stuff that was like you're like, I don't know what's going on here, and and uh, I'm not really sure how to deal with this. One, yes. When <laughs> about okay, this is a real crazy story, and people can write it off, disbelieve it. I really don't care. All right. Uh, when I was in Kowak, a lady called my wife and I over to the house and invited us to dinner and we're over there eating. And then after we get done, <laughs> she says to me, she was like, well, pastor, she was like, uh, she says, I don't want you to think I'm crazy. And I'm like, okay. And she was like, but there's like a weird ghost upstairs in my room and it bothers me at night. And she was like, I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm a pastor and I, I know the Bible. I understand all that. And I understand there's spirits and whatnot. I had no idea what to do. Not a clue. Not a ghostbuster, not a demon person not any effect i'm a new pastor and <laughs> it's like she wants me to go upstairs and make the ghost go away so i <laughs> go upstairs <laughs> and i just prayed and asked god to put it out and you know uh i have to tell you the that whole room was like ice cold. It was hot outside and that room was ice cold and it was dark. And it, it was just really weird up there. Not, the rest of her house was fine. I had no problem. It was only when I went upstairs to her bedroom in the upstairs loft area that there was a problem. And so my wife uh, got out her Bible and she read Psalm 91, which is the, the Psalm, they call it the Psalm of Spiritual Warfare. And as soon as she started reading that, um, what the, the ice cold, all of that, it like went away. And the lady told us later that she was able to sleep peacefully in, in the room after that. Now, can I tell you that was a spirit? I don't know. 
I don't know. I can tell you it was weird. <laughs> it was weird as hell. But uh, it was just, to this day, ever since I did that, I'm the demon guy. Whenever somebody has ghost trouble in co-op, they call me up and ask me what they should do. So I actually had to study about that stuff so I could tell them. And it's like, I don't know, you know, that that's really weird. And I'm sorry, you, you probably weren't even asking about that. No, that's You're probably asking about something like Bigfoot or whatever. But I've heard so many crazy stories and seen weird stuff in, in co-op and the surrounding area that um there's been reports up there of ufos um actual ufos um they had a i guess a, a, pl- a plane that was traveling here it was a small aircraft like a uh what do they call those the ones that have the float flotation devices on oh them. sure yeah yeah the fl- float planes yeah <laughs> I guess they were flying to catch a can from Kowak and they got like shot a UFO shot by it was a large silver object and it passed them like they were standing still and they said it had no visible means of propulsion. They said it had no sound, nothing. Um, and they said it was just the craziest looking thing. And they said it was about the size of a football field. Oh, wow. So it was, it was really good sized. And uh, so they only saw it for a second and it passed by. Uh, And it was just, it was out of sight in like a second. And they said it was flying real crazy. They said it it would like shoot up at like a 90 degree angle from going straight and like took off up into the air and flew off and they never saw it again. But yeah, there's, there's been a lot of weird stuff around Alaska that people have talked about that's just bizarro. Now, I've never seen a UFO, so I can't say anything about that, but I do know people who have seen them, and they're they're real serious about it, and I believe them. Did but you, I don't know if that's what you're asking about. I'm sorry. No, that it's that's exactly it. When you were up there, did you ever run into any situations where people would say they heard, like, baby cries in the woods? God, yes. Yeah. The Kushtaka do that crap. According to the Clinkets and the Haidas said that their version of the Kushtaka does the same thing. It makes baby cries. And what it's trying to do is lure you into the woods. Um, and when I say Kushtaka, I mean the shape-shifting evil spirit. I don't mean Bigfoot. Right. Some people think that Bigfoot is Kushtaka, but from what I've studied since I left Kowak, um, the majority of Clinket people that I've talked to believe that it's an evil spirit, a shapeshifter, not a Bigfoot. And so they said that they do that. And then I've heard reports uh, from the lower 48 of Bigfoot doing that and making that kind of sound and, and like uh, trying to lure people into the forest. And if the people go and follow that, they disappear and nobody ever hears from them again. Mm-hmm. No, I have heard that. Yes. I've not personally heard the crying or anything like that. Thank goodness. Cause that would scare the hell out of me. But, um, I've heard people say people I know real well, people who aren't liars say that they've heard that. I'm not sure how I would, I would react to that either. That I've thankfully never heard that. Um, I've never really heard that come up in Iowa ever, but it's a possibility I could hear it someday, but, um, something that's come up, I've talked to a few individuals from Alaska since we last talked, um, when you were up there or, you know, talking to people up there, did stories of giants ever come up at all? Yeah. Six toed giants. Yes. Is that something you can elaborate on? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Um, you pick people. We're seeing them for years. They said that the giants hunted mammoths all the way up to the twenties. They said these gigantic six toed things, um, and they were gigantic, but they're not exactly like Bigfoot from what I've heard. 
um they're just they're like and when i say giant i don't mean like 10 or 12 feet i mean like a lot taller than that and uh from what i was told by a yupik elder uh they said that those things used to hunt mammoths wow it, was that in the southeast or or what what a uh, section of alaska uh that was that around mean? like barrow uniclete um uh, and some other places up there man that is wild do you think there's still mammoth up there I can't say there are, but I can tell you that my grandmother, who was Yupik, said that her mom claimed to have eaten mammoth and uh, also had like ivory from tusks that were too large to be uh, like walrus or something like that. Wow. And, and for reference, for you know, I wasn't familiar myself. I had to look it up. But Barrow, Alaska is, is if you imagine, the very, very top of Alaska. Mm -hmm. That's where you're at. So imagine the, the farthest north you can get. And mm -hmm. that's where you were having some, uh, some mammoth sightings. That's crazy. Wow. They say they're, they're, they're still around. Um, but... I haven't heard anything in the last like 20 or 30 years, anything that was recent of anyone seeing a mammoth, but uh, some people think that they're still around. They think those six toed giants, some of them that I've talked to, they think they're the ones that hunted the mammoths to extinction. Wow. That's or wild. Close to it. That, that's, that's just what they said. I can't say it's true. I can only tell you what people have told me. Now, whether it's true or not, I, I Ray Crow of the Western Bigfoot Society always used to say, when you hear reports, always keep your skepticals on. Mm -hmm. He called his classes as skepticals. Um, and so I, I encourage readers, if you hear stories, uh, be skeptical about it. Check, verify, stuff like that as much as you humanly can. Or if you're just the type of person who finds it entertaining, you don't really care one way or the other. Just listen to it, enjoy it, and move on. Mm. Simple. Are there any, uh, I, I'm sure it sounds like you've always been into Bigfoot. I'm sure you're, you're still looking into Bigfoot right now. Is there anything going on right now regarding Bigfoot research that really has, uh, that has you uh, interested or is keeping you up at night in any way? In Montana, yeah. Out around Glacier National Park area. Okay. There's been some real crazy stories coming out of there. Really? Yeah. Like people disappearing, people seeing Bigfoot, people seeing something else, not a Bigfoot, something weird. Um, maybe like a baboon or something almost, but it, it has, it almost looks like a baboon, I guess. Like, um, like a, a I think the, it's called a gugway maybe sometimes. I don't know that if you've ever be. heard about that. That's really interesting. So, uh, are these from uh podcasts or where are you seeing these reports come? Um, I've actually heard them from native people who live here in Montana. Really? Oh, wow. Now, I will tell you, they're not people who are going to come forward with that kind of stuff because they don't want to lose their jobs. But um, they, yeah, I've heard stories from, like, my wife works for, uh, actually, I probably better not say that. Um, yeah, let's I, just I, say she works with the Native community <laughs> in a medical capacity and leave sure. it at that. Yep. I yep. don't want to get her in trouble. Yeah, we don't want that to happen. Or anything yeah. Else, but, yeah. Um, I do know that I have personally, outside of her employment, met people who are pro or Cheyenne. Because I was listening to a Bigfoot show one time, and uh, I was up there on the res. Um, I was listening to a Bigfoot show, and I happened to have my windows down because it was hard in Hades out there. And so I had my windows down, and I was listening to uh, 
Monster Quest on my phone, an old episode of Monster Quest. And one of the fellows heard me tell, heard me listen to that, and he comes up, he goes, oh, you believe in Bigfoot? I was like, yeah, I believe in Bigfoot. I don't believe in it. I know it's real. And he goes, how do you know? And I told him why I know, because of my sighting when I was a boy. And he looked at me and he goes, you know, there's a lot of people out here on the reservation who've seen those things even now. And he was telling me all kinds of stories about it. And it's just so weird. It's like they've had stories of like children getting snatched or women. Um, they've had stories of, you know, people who were out hunting, disappearing and never being heard from again. Um, and stuff like that. Do you remember anything, any details at all about what you heard regarding something that looked like a baboon in Glacier National Park? That was around Glacier, Glacier National Park. Um, they said it was large. Um, they said it had a tail. They said it had a snout like a baboon. Um, and they said it had weird ears. And they didn't really describe it. They just said it was weird. Um, and they said it was real powerfully built. But they said that the face of it looked like a baboon, not like a dog man or, or other things. They said it looked more like a baboon. And the person I spoke to actually was like wondering if it was like a, some kind of weird experiment from some government facility. And I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> I've never heard anything like that. Now I've heard of the dog man and stuff like that, but they said this didn't look like, because I was like, what was it like a wolf, like a dog or something? And they were like, no, it looked like a baboon. It had a face like a baboon, but it was much larger than a baboon, like, you know, six feet, six and a half feet tall. And they said it was more powerfully built than a baboon, but they said the face looked just like, like if you see a picture of a baboon, that's what the face and the snout looked like on it. And it had a tail like a baboon. Wow. That's... So I don't think, I, I don't think it was a dog, man. Man, a, a regular sized baboon is a bad day, but you get a baboon that's stronger and bigger. That's going to be a really bad day. And I mean, yeah. if any listeners have heard of, uh, a large, huge, giant baboon type cryptid in the Glacier National Park area of Montana. Put it in the comments, or if you need to, you can send me an email at bigfootsociety at gmail.com. But did you, uh, Alex, over the years, you, you've had a lot of contact with, with different types of people. Did you ever have any reports of uh, dogman sightings at all? Yes. Yep. Um, I had a friend who was from Michigan, and he was from that area up north of Detroit. I cannot remember what the name of that crazy town was he was from. I apologize. I, he told me once, and I, I just I cannot right now remember what the name of the town was, but they had like a, a dog man that was running around there killing animals like dogs and cats. And they said it was definitely a canid type thing but it was it had hands not not like paws oh. and uh it, they said it had like uh it had like let's see how do i put this look i'll just tell you what they said you can take it however you want sure you know how canines have the kind of bent legs you know what i mean yep. kind of weird back legs they said it had legs like that, but it had like on the bottom of it, instead of having like paws, it had like feet, but it had like a wolf tail, wolf ears and a wolf face and the snout that wolves have. But they said it looked like something that was like part human or something. And I, again, I can only tell you what they said. I can't tell you what's reality from fiction. I do believe the person because when they talked about it, they, Again, I've said this before on previous programs, when people have really seen something, you can see in their eyes the trauma of what they experienced. And that person, when he told me that story, he very much 
he 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 turned white he was shaking this is a really strong tough guy you know what i mean he's not a crybaby or a fusser or whatever he was really the strong silent type and this dude broke down and started crying when he reported what he saw so for him to do that uh is very out of character for him and so you know he he said don't don't hate me or think i'm he said don't think i'm uh Oh, P-U-S-S-Y. I apologize. That's just what the man said. I'm not trying to be bad or disgusting. I, I get it. I apologize yeah. if I offended I get anybody. It. But that's what he said. He said, I don't want you thinking I'm that. I said, I've been knowing you for a while, dude. I know you're not like that. So I said, I believe you. And he's like, you do? He was like, when I told my well, my effing family, they got all hurt and said I was a liar and was making it up. And I was like, people say stuff like that because they don't want to try to think about or deal with in their mind what you're discussing with them mm-hmm. because it's so outside of the realm of what they understand. Yeah. And so, you know, they they react hatefully or negatively or or foolishly because their brains can't wrap around the concept that there's things outside of what they know that exist. Mm. I mean, if I had a dollar for every, every time somebody asked me if I saw a friggin' bear or if it was a dude in a fur suit, if I had a dollar for every time some dumb, I'm sorry. I want to really curse when I hear people say stuff like that. It's like, look, the Bigfoot had a flat face. It didn't have the snout of a bear. Uh-huh. Didn't have the weird furry ears on top of the head. Okay. And it didn't look like that. It had hands and feet, not paws. So, you know, when people tell me it was a bear, it's like, I've seen every type of bear in North America you can show me. Sure. Either on TV or in the zoo. Or I've gone hunting and hunted them. So I know what a bear looks like. I'm not a person who's never seen a bear. Mm -hmm. I wasn't 50 or 100 feet away from it. Saw something run by and, oh, that's Bigfoot. I saw this thing from three and a half feet away. I saw exactly clearly what it was. When I told my grandpa what it was, he didn't say, oh, the damn bears are back or the damn guys in fur suits are back. He said the damned apes are back. Yeah. So, you know, people can make it out whatever they want. I really don't care. You know, exactly. if you want to be stupid and say, I saw a bear, then you're a moron because you don't know bears have snouts, ears on top of the head, and paws, not feet and hands. Right. So, you know, if you can't tell the difference between that and a Bigfoot at three and a half feet, then you're a moron and you don't really need to be commenting. And I really doubt there's a massive eight foot guy in a suit running around in 1978 yeah you can miss probably not idiots probably not yeah uh alex this has been a fun episode because there's so many tangents we've been on that it will probably no in a good way that listeners will definitely get something new to look into from this episode it's been a it's been a fun one it is always a fun time to chat with you sir and i appreciate you You coming on again um Anything else uh, weird comes up, feel free to reach out. But uh, thank you so much for for hanging out tonight, Alex. All right. Well, God bless and you take care of my friend. You too, sir. All right. Bye. Bye. Here at Bigfoot Society, our goal is to provide a platform for those that have encountered Bigfoot to share their encounter in a safe and respected environment. But we need to hear your story. If you've experienced something that you just can't explain, please send me an email at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Then we can start the conversation. I know a lot of you have not shared your encounter at all it's been 20 years and it's time that you get this off your chest and then you can get some well-deserved rest because i know you haven't been sleeping i understand what you're going through and i appreciate every one of you listening